Good evening students. Welcome to Johannes Geology classes. In last class, we discussed about the innate acquired immunity, different barriers, different lines of defensive mechanism and organs of immune system. In this class, let us see what is adaptive immunity, their components and types of adaptive immunity. Adaptive or acquired immunity. This is uh, the type of immunity developed during the lifetime of the animal. Or the immune system generally adapt to different type of pathogens. So it is called acquired or adaptive immunity. The main components involved in this acquired or adaptive are B cells and T cells. In last class, we already discussed about the B and T cells, their formation, maturation, activation, everything. Now here the B cells, they form group of antibodies. And released into the humors. Now here humors are nothing but body fluids. Now these antibodies they can fight with the antigen. Immunity that is brought by are mediated by the antibodies found in humors. The name given as humoral immunity. On the other side, T cells are directly involved in killing the infected cell. As the mediation or the immunity that is brought by the T cells directly, so it is called cell mediated immunity. Before we discuss about the humoral and cell mediated immunity, first let us see the structure of antibody. This is the structure of antibody. The shape of antibody is Y shape. It consists of two heavy chains, H2, and two light chains, EL2. And these chains are heavy and light chains are linked with each other by disulfide bonds and also we can answer the disulfide bonds between two heavy chains and the same disulfide bonds are also found within the chains of heavy and light chains the terminal parts of heavy and light chains together considered as FAB-site site or antigen binding site this is EFAB site. And the last part of the stem region is called EFC site. Fragment crystallizable site. And of course, this part is also called as parato antigen binding site. This can bind with the, the epitope of the antigen. Now the remaining part of the arm and stem together considered as constant region. Now this region is called variable region. Based on the constant region, there are five types of antibodies. Simply you can remember like this DA EMEG damage but actually we must represent like this IgD IgA IgM IgE and IgG so Ig represents immunoglobin now let us see these antibodies one by one now first IgM this is a largest antibody It 
it is generally formed at the time of primary infection. And this is a pentamere. Next, IgG. This is smallest antibody. Highest number or highest percentage. And they can cross through placenta. And this antibody provides permanent immunity. Next, IgA. This is a dimer. This is found in body fluids. Found in cholesterol, saliva, and also found in mucus. Next, IgD. These are surface antibodies. Found on the surface of the B cell. Next, Ig, are of a least percentage. They are formed at the time of allergy. This is about the antibodies. Now, let us see the mechanism of humoral and cell-mediated immunity. The mechanism of humoral immunity. Whenever the B cell reaches the secondary lymphoid organs where antigens are present. Now remember, B cell can recognize the free antigens. It cannot recognize the intracellular antigens. Whenever any antigen come in contact with a specific antibody, it recognizes that antigen. First, it engulfs the antigen by a process called endocytosis. Remember, here the B cell acts as an antigen presenting cell. It engulfs the antigen, it digests the antigen, and it processes the antigen, and the processed antigenic peptide is generally attaches to MHC. What is MHC? Major histocompatibility. On the surface of uh, all nucleated cells, we can observe MHC class 1. But on the surface of uh, antigen presenting cells, generally MHC class 2 is present. Now the B cell, MHC present the antigen on the surface, especially antigen is presented by MHC class 2. TH generally recognizes the antigenic peptide with the help of its receptor. And with this recognition, TH undergo activation. The activated TH release interleukins. Now these interleukins stimulates B cell now the activated B cell divides into memory and plasma. It can divide repeatedly to form number of copies. The memory cell is having surface antibodies to a specific antigen. On the other hand, plasma cells, they continuously release the antibodies into the humors. Now this release antibodies, they generally interact with the antigen they can neutralize or they can block the antigens. So this, the antibodies that are released with the humors, it can fight with the extracellular antigens. 
Now the immunity that is brought by the antibodies released into the humors, so the type of immunity is called humoral immunity. Now let us see the cell mediated immunity. If any pathogen enters the body, that can be engulfed by macrophage. Now this macrophage also acts as a APC that is antigen presenting cell. It engulfs the antigen, it digests the antigen, it processes the antigenic uh, peptides and those processed antigenic peptides are attached to MHC class 2 and these MHC class 2 submit the antigen to TH that is T helper cell. Uh, with this recognition TH undergo activation and produce interleukins. Now here the interleukins can activate uh, macrophages so that macrophages can further engulf the antigens. They can also activate natural killer cells and TC cytotoxic T cells. Of course the mechanism of NK and T cells is same. Now the activated T cells can attack the infected cell, release some chemicals and they can destroy the cell. This is called apoptosis. This is programmed cell death. So here the T cells are mainly, especially TC, can directly kill the virus infected or any pathogen infected cells. So this type of immunity is called cell mediated immunity. T cells are also involved in rejecting the organ transplantation or tissue transplantation that is grafting so two things must be considered at the time of grafting number one mhc matching number two recruit matching these two are very important next so types of adaptive immunity adaptive immunity is of two types active and passive in active the immune system gets activated by the entry of pathogen. In passive immunity, the antibodies are transferred from sensitized person to non-sensitized person. And the immunity developed through active process is permanent. And whereas the immunity developed through passive process is temporary. As long as the antibodies are found within your body, they can fight with the infection. But these are not long lasting. So the passive immunity is purely temporary process. Next, active immunity is of two types, natural and artificial. On the other side, passive is also of two types, natural and artificial. The natural active process generally occur with a natural entry of pathogen at the time of infection. Best example, smallpox. When a person is infected with smallpox, it can develop the antibodies against the particular pathogen. And in case of artificial, generally we introduce the antigens wantedly into the body in order to activate the immune system. Best example, vaccination. In case of vaccination, in olden days, we used to introduce the whole organism in order to activate the immune system. 
but nowadays we are producing only antigenic peptide by using our DNA technology so that only the antigenic peptide can be introduced into the body in order to activate the immune system. Best example for natural parcel is transfer of antibodies from mother to mother to baby during a breastfeeding. I think you know in cholesterol we can observe IgA antibody and IgG can also cross through placenta and reaches the fetus. As the immune system is very primitive in newborns, these antibodies who come from mother, they can fight with the infection temporarily until the baby develops his immune system. In artificial method, we transfer the preformed pre antibodies into the infected person. And these antibodies are generally injected during emergency. For example, in case of snake bite, in case of uh, tetanus, we transfer the preformed antibodies into the person to fight with the antigen immediately. So this can give the immediate attack, but uh, these antibodies cannot stay for longer periods. So this type of immunity is temporary. Next, let us see about the allergy. Allergy is a type of hypersensitivity. What is hypersensitivity? This is an exaggerated immune response. That is overactivity of immune response towards the antigen. This allergy comes under type one hypersensitivity. Or let us see the mechanism. Allergy is a type of hyper sensitivity and uh, this allergy is a uh, type 1 hypersensitivity and the substances responsible for allergy are called allergens nothing but antigens when allergens enter the body ige antibody cells these antibodies attach mast cells and they stimulate the mast cells to produce a inflammatory substances. These inflammatory substances are nothing but uh, histamine, serotonin and they cause inflammatory reaction. That leads to sneezing, watering of eyes, running nose, difficulty in breathing. All these are the characteristic features of allergy. And how we can minimize the inflammatory reactions? Simply by giving antihistamines, adrenaline, and steroids. Next, uh, autoimmunity. Generally, our immune system can recognize the difference between self and non-self. Due to some genetical defect or some other reason, the immune system can attack our own tissues. This is called autoimmunity. If we observe the different uh, examples, rheumatoid arthritis, myasthenia gravis, Addison disease, Graves disease. All these are the examples for autoimmunity. Okay, students, that's all about human immunology. I hope you liked my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Thank you very much.